Hey everyone, this is Jesse Leach from Kill Switch Engage, and you're watching Loudwire. And you've been uh, very open about stuff like depression, uh, anxiety, yeah. uh, the high and low parts of your life. Uh, you did a, a video recently for the U Rock Foundation, mm -hmm. which is really cool. I really like what they do. And uh, being a person who has like written about depression and stuff like that for like 20 years now. How, what do you find the stigma of depression? People don't take of, it serious enough. Well, do you think that it's changed since like the early 90s until now or not so I much? think it's getting better, yeah. I think yeah. before there wasn't much of a dialogue going on and you see the passing mm. of a celebrity like Robin Williams, for example, That's exactly who I was which of which opens that, yeah. up a lot of eyes because everyone's like, "Oh, we didn't realize." Yeah. But that's because there's no dialogue going on. People don't really talk about that stuff because they're ashamed of it. And for me, I've just learned to like that's just a part of who I am. And then the more I talk about, it, the more I find people who have the same issues that I do. And then when you start that dialogue, you start to find solutions. You start to find. You know, well, what works for you? you know, I'll ask somebody, what works for you? I'll exercise or, or yeah. this or that, you know? Instead of just choking on pills, finding natural ways like, you know, herbal marijuana helps for some people with anxiety and depression, which that should be legalized. It's ridiculous that it's not. So opening up that dialogue is, is just helping and that needs to continue because, you know, people don't need to be killing themselves over this stuff. Yeah. There is always a hope for, for that kind of stuff. There's always hope for balancing it out whether it's a situational thing or something you just struggle with mentally, the dialogue needs to continue. That, that is interesting, because when I was kind of thinking of asking you that question, I thought Robin Williams, because yeah. that, that caused people to start people that were dialogue. People were shocked, people were shocked. People were heartbroken yeah. and just completely shocked. And, you but know, on a regular basis, non-celebrities do that. Dude, suicide oh, is a yeah, really, yeah. I've seen suicide with my own eyes. Like I've seen it happen, I've, I've really? witnessed, I've had friends take themselves out and that's, and you think to yourself like, what, what could I have done to help? You know, what could I have done to prevent that? And it's just the person has to be willing to talk about it. You can't help somebody if you don't know what's, what's wrong with them, you know? The whole thing with mental illness, I feel like the, the term mental illness is somewhat of a cop out because like the mind's intangible and Men and depression, anxiety, it's a chemical imbalance. Mm. So it's just as physical, mm. I think, as any other No, you're ailment. right. And it's worse for some people and not as bad for some people. Yeah. It's just like people can have mild autism or Asperger's or right. whatever, it runs, you're right, it runs the gamut and it is a chemical imbalance. Yeah. And then, you know, back to the stigma thing, it goes even to like, talk about health insurance, where you can go to a doctor uh, for a physical problem but it won't pay for a mental problem. Physical rehabilitation, yeah, not mental yeah. rehabilitation. And uh, do you feel like it's it's more complex than mental illness? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, of course I do. But I mean, that's why you have a lot of people who are drug addicts or alcoholics that deal with depression and, sure. and bipolarism or anxiety or whatever. You know, turning to things like that because it's the quickest and the easiest thing than having to like admit or talk to somebody and then get help and then then when you finally do get help, a lot of times they just want to push pills down your throat. It's broken. The whole system towards mental illness is broken and yeah. uh, it needs to be fixed. Again, that's why the dialogue needs to continue. That's why we need to legalize uh, medicinal marijuana or low-dose psychedelia. These things that are happening in the underground that are helping people and helping to solve some of those issues instead of like poisoning yourself with uh, medication. Yeah. yeah. I've heard even people talk about like psilocybin. Yeah, it's, I, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, just in, you know, as you said, in low doses. Do your research. It's there. The, it's there and, you know, talk to people who have done it. It's, it definitely helps. Yeah. It also helps in high doses. <laughs> <laughs> or we wouldn't have Black Sabbath. We wouldn't have... Oh, thank God. Jimi Hendrix. Oh, my... Of course. That's like people who want to, like, keep drugs oh, illegal. Right. You're obviously not a fan of rock and roll. Right. Yeah, throw away all your Beatles albums. Any of that stuff. Yeah. Hell, country music, same thing. There's drugs in yeah, that too. Yeah, that's, that's some dark stuff. Johnny Cash. She legalize it, man. Yeah, absolutely. Willie Nelson. And don't criticize it. <laughs> um, so, to finish off the depression conversation, um, I feel like with me, I find that 
you know, from day to day, I kind of have my spectrum of, okay, here's the lowest moment of, of maybe my life. Here's the highest moment. Mm -hmm. Where am I today? Where am I in danger of slipping? When you were writing this new record, where were you on yeah. your <laughs> Kind of all over the place. Okay, yeah. Um, when I started, I was in a pretty high place. <clears throat> and then uh, Strength of the Mind came out of that. And then progressively kind of slipped into a bit of a funk. And at my lowest, I wrote It Falls On Me, which is probably the, s the saddest oh. song on the record. But it's a soul-searching song. And you have to learn how to, as a musician at least, um, from my creative point of view, dealing with depression and, and whatever, um, I have to find inspiration in the highs and the lows. Mm. I have to learn how to operate on the highs and the lows. Those days when I don't want to get out of bed, where I just don't want to face the world, there's something there that can be learned and can be utilized through creativity. So it's just a matter of like training yourself, getting the tools to, to you know, having those synapses connect. It's yeah. just a matter of practice. And as with anything, if you practice, you know, my whole thing is PMA. Bad Brains are one of my favorite bands. They wrote a song called Attitude. PMA, positive mental attitude. Absolutely. And it's like a lifestyle. I've carried that from my early days as a hardcore kid, you know? That keeps me going, because it's, it's true, it's all here. I mean, again, strength of the mind. It's, it's another way of saying PMA. Just having that strength to, yeah, totally. to pull yourself up. And that's valuable. Sometimes people just need to hear that. So, yeah, on my lowest days, sometimes I don't get out of bed, but sometimes I do, and I might jot something down, and it falls on me is a case in point of that. Yeah. Came from a really dark, dark place in the writing process. Sure. Yeah, we got that attitude, that positive yeah. mental so good. attitude, the bad brain. Whenever I hear that song, I want to knock things over in the, <laughs> in the most loving way possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>